amplifying you. Hi, I'm Kurt Amundsen. I'm a senior director of Exo Labs and Health here at Exobionics, and I'm here today to talk a little bit about ExoGT. Um, ExoGT is a four-axis exoskeleton. It's got powered hips and knees. It helps people uh, who have had severe lower limb impairments like stroke or spinal cord injury get up and walking again in a clinical setting. And so the idea is that your therapist can get you up and, and walking sooner. Um, I'm really a technology guy. I work on the robotics part of the device and have for years with our engineering team. Um, the machine is built of uh, mostly aluminum actually. We got a bunch of carbon fiber composites all over it. You can see some here on the thigh straps and, and up and down on the leg panels. Um, it's powered with lithium ion batteries in the back. The computer is on the back. Um, and, you know, in a sense, that's become a standard topology for exoskeletons. But we've gone some steps beyond that in the design on this thing. And, and part of what makes this a really neat machine is how adjustable it is. Um, the ExoGT can be entirely readjusted in about five minutes. Uh, it's got all these handy little adjustments up and down the leg. And it actually turns out that's a lot of engineering to build because you need to make those really strong, really smooth adjustments so that they can be done quickly in the field by PTs working with patients on a daily basis. So a lot of the work over the years went into how you make those adjustments quick and, and reliable because they have to last for years out in the field. Another thing that's really neat about this device is something that you can't see at all looking at it, which is how neat the software is underneath. The ExoGT adapts a little bit to the terrain as the person moves and tries to keep its foot uh, a nice good position off the ground. And while it does that, it's also capable of providing an adaptive level of assistance. And that's a package that, that, that we call Smart Assist here. And what it does is it'll actually turn down how much the exoskeleton is helping so that the PT can challenge the patient and get them to put more work into their gait cycle. That's really important for rehabilitation, which is really what ExoGT is all about. Um, and from a technical point of view, what makes that so interesting is it's actually kind of hard to get a robot not to do everything for you. Robots just want to do everything. They want to do it perfectly every time. That's what robots are good at. So actually teaching the robot to back off a little bit and let the person work, that was a really hard thing to do. It took the engineers a long time here. The other thing that's, that's really neat about these robots that you can't see is the team of people it takes to make it work. Um, this is not uh, like Iron Man where you have uh, Tony Stark just show up and build the exoskeleton. It takes teams of people working for years and years to get these devices right. Probably more than 100 people have, have had an impact on the design of the device. And now that we've talked about ExoGT and I've told you a little bit about that, let me show you some of the history of the different exoskeletons we've built. I always like to start when we do the history wall with uh, Hulk 1. This is the original Hulk exoskeleton we built. It's built out of cast titanium. Um, we built this back in 2007 to 2009 um, when we were just a little tiny company in downtown Berkeley in a funky old office space. Um, the, the Hulk was intended to help soldiers with really heavy loads. You could put a backpack up here. The weight would, would transfer down through the frame, through the titanium structure, and down to the ground. Um, we, we chased the design for a few years, and it was a really fascinating um, experience in, in learning to work with that sort of stuff, and it taught us a lot about the topology of exoskeletons and how to build them. So if you look at some of our later designs, like the GT that we just saw, you'll see that they have the same kind of anthropomorphic structures down the leg, um, and a lot about how you do the computing platform and mobile power with the batteries and electronics on the back. So really a learning experience for us. Um, if we jump forward in history a little bit, we also experimented early on with some non-anthropomorphic designs. And so non-anthropomorphic means that it doesn't follow the natural form of the human body. Um, and so this is a really interesting design that we did that dates back to about 2011. Um, it was an NSF project, so the National Science Foundation uh, provided us a research grant to explore it. And it looked at the idea of going straight from the hip down to the ankle with a hydraulic cylinder. And so you, could, you basically had a spring behind the cylinder, and if you wanted, you could clutch the spring in, and it made it almost weightless to go up and down. And then the spring would get clutched out, and you could walk around normally. Um, and it helped inform our decisions farther and down the line as we looked at industrial. And we'll see a bit of that here in a minute. Another real interesting design uh, was actually another NSF project, National Science Foundation. We were looking at doing the GT at the time and how we would really expand the indication of exo from uh, spinal cord injury to stroke. And in doing that, we experimented with, you know, we said, hey, uh, stroke is primarily a hemiplegic injury. It means it affects one side of the body more than the other. Um, and we said, well, let's build an exoskeleton that has one powered leg and one unpowered leg. Um, and we experimented with this, and actually it, it worked great. Um, uh, for the right patient, this could be fantastic. Um, but really what we figured out was that the time to switch the legs, because some people are right affected and some people are left affected, was really long. 
And what we learned was we could configure the same kind of behaviors in software in XOGT, and so now the PT can just flip a button and, and change the behavior of the machine rather than having to go through the process of bolting and unbolting a leg. So some of the learning experiences um, as we work through these different disorders, the direction you start out is not necessarily the direction you end up going. We've also done projects that are for able-bodied applications in the recent years. Um, this was a design that we did and tested with the Army back in 2014 uh, at the Aberdeen uh, Proving Grounds out in Maryland. Um, it's a design that's really focused on providing energy to help somebody walk. So the goal is just try and get somebody to use less energy as they, as they move forward. Um, and so it's actually intended to be a set of knee braces down here. Uh, it's completely flexible down to there. And you put the knee braces on around your knee, and it helps you move your leg forward. Um, we did this back in about 2014 um, and learned a lot doing it. Uh, but the downside of this kind of approach is that it doesn't transfer any of the weight of the rucksack, any of the pack that the person's carrying down to the ground. And so you're still left with all the weight on your shoulders. And in fact, that was one of the main pieces of feedback we got from the, uh, the subjects who tested it for us then. Um, so this is like the polar opposite design. It's always great that these are next to each other on the wall because here's a design that has um, strength but no structure, and this is a st structure with no strength, and so it's a, it's a really great contrast in what you can do with an exoskeleton. So we're here, we're trying to help somebody walk and move your leg forward. In, in this design, which is an early prototype of a, a chassis for our industrial group, um, the idea is you could take something like the G4 arm that, that it, our industrial team sells, mount it to the hip here, and then have a load transfer down to the ground through these legs. And by doing that, the person doesn't feel any other weight of the, of the arm and doesn't feel any other weight of, of the tool that they're holding with the, the, the G4 arm. So it's a really great application. Um, and we, we did a lot of, a lot of neat stuff in, in building this, making it really quick to reconfigure. And the other neat thing about this is you can see some of the echoes all the way back to the Hulk 1. You can see some of the same pieces and topology in this structure. And in fact, it's same, based on the, the very same intellectual property, but a reimagining it of a way that it's useful in the factory. So we see a lot of potential for these going forward in the future. Um, but even extending beyond that, we wanted to know how light we could go. Um, this, is, this is a pretty light design, but we actually were able to get this one, which is a flexible load carriage exoskeleton, down to just 13 pounds. And so you can easily pick it up with one arm. It, it straps tightly to your legs and uses a series of flexible cables to transfer load down to the ground. Um, all in all, it's just a really different approach to how you do exactly the same thing as that, that design. And one of the neat things here at Exobionics is we've had enough experience over the years with different designs like these that when we go to make a commercial product in the area of, of light duty load carriage for something like this, we have a lot of opportunity to, uh, to look at what we're doing. Um, and since I'm a little bit on the topic of intellectual property, I think the next thing we're off to do is go look at the patent wall. We'll start here at the oldest ones. And actually, this dates from so long ago, it's uh, at the University of California where many of us started out um, learning about exoskeletons. Um, and it was a design that was really complicated, especially at the time, uh, but it, it was really foundational in that it taught us how to assemble an exoskeleton from the ground up and what kind of pieces, and we learned a lot about it, the importance of energetics. Then we moved on to a lot of the able-bodied load carriage devices, and so there's several here that are related to different ideas around the Hulk, and it's different designs on, on how you carry weight around a person to the ground, and then how you help the person walk. So really combining some of the things we were talking about when we were looking at our old designs out there. Um, and some of these are, are particularly uh, dear to me. This one actually, uh, I'm the first inventor on, and that was a lot of the work I did in my thesis on. So um, doing different pieces of work on, on how you work with an with a exoskeleton around a person and how you transfer energy and power into their gait cycle. Um, up top, we have a few of the ones relating to the industrial system, so working on things like gimbal mounts. And I think one of the strengths of Exobionics' patent portfolio is that there's just all kinds of different inventors, uh, either different inventors in-house or patents that we've licensed in over the years because we saw somebody had a great idea and wanted to be the ones to commercialize it. And so in this case, the, uh, a lot of the outside work comes in um, on the industrial line on some of the gravity balancing uh, technologies that we have there. And so putting those all together into a product line has is, is been one of the really fascinating things here at Exo. You get over here into some of the medical device applications uh, and, and granted patents now. And so these talk about how you actually put an exoskeleton on around someone who's, who's completely paralyzed or who's had a stroke. Um, when we first started doing this work and we were looking at, at powering a person's gait cycle forward, we were thinking about able-bodied devices because we were working on exoskeletons for people carrying heavy loads. 
but actually it turned out that some of the same principles apply to exoskeletons for, for medical applications because you still need to be able to propel the, the walking cycle forward. So some of those applications have been really foundational to the business. Take the next step with us.